He has been bestowed with awards like Educationalist of the Year, Film Media Award, Best Personality and Young Entrepreneur Awards and Bravery Award by AIATF. As Managing Director of IIMT, North India's largest educational group, Dr. Agarwal is a constant in maintaining contact with students and their parents. His visits to several countries establishes him as a pioneer in understanding and maintaining mutual teaching learning processes between countries. Uh, I humbly request Honorable Dr. Mayank Agrawal, Managing Director, IMT Group of Colleges, for his presidential and welcome address. Uh, thank you, Prabhupada, ma'am. I hope I am audible to you all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are very much audible. So, uh, good afternoon to everyone, all the distinguished guests present here, participants from various uh, faculties, staff members. On behalf of IAMT Group of Colleges, I would like to welcome our today's chief guest, Dr. Neeraj Saxena Ji, advisor AICTE, Acharya Adian Vajpayee Ji, Vice Chancellor ABBP uh, University Chhattisgarh, Dr. Amit Ji, Deputy Director, Atal Cell AICTE, uh, Dr. M. K. Stoney, Dr. Bakshi, Director of IMT College of Management. First of all, I would like to congratulate Dr. Bakshi here for organizing this online FDP. Although he is not well, suffering from I hope COVID, but still uh, not well in organizing such an event, of course, is a word of appreciation for him. And I would appreciate you, Dr. Bakshi, for organizing this FDP. It will definitely enhance the knowledge of our staff and faculty members, those who are working day and night and uh, in making this event a successful event. The topic recent advancement and emerging technologies in the year in the area of education and research. Of course, in my opinion, the topic no doubt is very good chosen by the director and the, of course it is a vast topic. Education and research is a global topic which includes everything as per my opinion and of course the suitable as per today's need as well. As I understand every day there is an advancement. Every day there is some uh, new technologies coming up. Every day new things are inventing, every new things are discovering. Even this online FDP what we are conducting today is an example of technology development. It would have not have been possible if we would have conducted this physically. Not many guests, distinguished guests, those who are participating in this event from far away places, it was not possible for them to attend this FTP if it would have been a physical activity. So this again is an example of technology development. Even budget 2022 says a lot about the technology advancement where the finance minister herself has quoted about the setting up of digital university. Is there another example where we can, you know, come up with the new technology of e-learning and new technology of giving content, content digitally to the students? After COVID-19, e-learning has become a first choice of each and every student or uh, due to COVID-19, it has become a first choice for each and every student as there is no other option. Some ways, some other ways. It is a, of course a good option to conduct the academics smoothly. And of course, research also plays a vital role and a major role in the development of any nation, any country. And every day we understand every advancement, every development in research, every day we can see new advancement and new developments in the research as well. Whether it may be in patent, whether it may be and a startup, whether it may be in product development, and even the government is supporting a lot uh, by providing different types of funds, grants, and uh, so that the private players can also come up and you know uh, make their contribution in the uh, development of the nation. Once again, I would like to welcome all the guests here, those who are here from far away places in this common platform for uh, enlightening our staff members, the faculty, those who are participating. I would like to 
thank all the guests those who are here for sparing their valuable time uh, for the for the announcement of the knowledge of our staff i wish a very great success of this online fdp and I appreciate the efforts of dr bakshi and his team for working so hard day and night and making this event a successful event thank you so much thank you sir for your so nice work thank for you. us thank you uh thank you so much dr mayank agrawal uh i feel that it is your guidance and your ever present hand is what is uh, taking imt group of colleges forward and rightly said by you that it is the private and government organizations that have to clap their hands together so that we can uh, develop and advance in the fields of education and research uh it is my privilege to introduce our chief guest dr neeraj saxena advisor aicte to our audience uh, dr saxena is a scientist and holds a phd in aeroacoustics from national physical laboratory as advisor he is heading the institution's development cell in aicte as a scientist he has headed the resource cell horizon scanning unit and sugar technology unit of tifac he was a core team member of technology vision 2035 and was deeply involved in preparing a roadmap for education as part of vision 2035 exercise which is a first ever foresight initiative undertaken for the sector in the country Between 2000 and 2010, Dr. Saxena piloted the activities of Mission Reach, a major initiative under Technology Vision 2020, to reorient the higher science and technical education and make it relevant to industries. Sir was instrumental in establishment of 35 TIFAC course centers of relevance and excellence. He was selected by the Department of Science and Technology to undergo executive education program on science, technology and innovation policy at the JF Kennedy School of Government at the Harvard University in 2006 and was trained in project management for World Bank funded projects at the International Training Center of the ILO in Turin, Italy in 2008. Sir, I welcome you on behalf of IMT College of Management and invite you for your address. Thank you very much, distinguished academicians. On my screen, off the screen, and those who are shuttling between the screens. A very good afternoon and namaskar to all the distinguished panelists over here. I'm very grateful to Dr. Bakshi and his team. Some of them are visible here, some not. i thank them all for inviting me to this event and uh, it's very important topic that you have chosen very vast uh, but as a technology foresight person i have i take it slightly different view which is slightly off the mainstream uh, i hold that what we have been doing is supporting education and that's where we are losing the plot we should have been promoting learning experiential learning and education was as a response to the industrial society that we had that we were living in but now we are into knowledge age so education must transform into learning and by learning i mean experiential learning autonomous learning so as an rank outsider i am a scientist not an academician like all of you so i see lot of changes and contrasts that are happening because of arrival of internet and democratization of information and knowledge so what was the preserve of classrooms is happening outside the classrooms all of you will agree with that so learning is on the go no longer confined to the classrooms books that we used our generation were linear you could go back or you could go, go to the next forward pages but here we are on the web pages embedded with web links and click and you are taken not forward or backward but entirely in a different world we are moving away from or rather we are forced to move from boring chapters 
to engaging problems. Inside the book information is no longer so enticing. And we start talking about out of the box thinking. 20, 30 years back, it was not the case. From knowledge transmission is gathering of experience that is carrying more weight now. Teacher is expected to be a mentor now. Now that online education is mainstreaming, we cannot do away with it. We have to live with it. And the online class, online learning happens from row one of your classrooms. So online is very extremely. Accomplishments do not carry weight. Ethics do. It's no longer degree which matters, but it's reputation. From management, we are moving towards optimization. From knowledge to skills. From teacher centered education to learner centered dispensations. From academic achievements to social benefits. Competition. We all have gone through that phases. Now we are moving to collaboration. Teach through textbooks is a past. Students learn through videos, social media platforms, virtual laboratories. We do not see our students taking notes as we did. So there is a lot of change that is happening, which were attributes of education. And now we must embrace these changes to go along with learning and support it. Even our prime minister has said that we need new age learning. And probably this is what he meant when it says learning for life, learning for skills. So we need to move away from our traditional structures and that would mean not just your classrooms, but even the teachers, your syllabus, examinations, everything. So we are in a state of flux and some of the directions will come from the new education policy that we have. So if you see assessment was possible only by teachers. which was necessary for pushing one student to the next grade. Now a person is assessed on the social media. A lot is known about a person outside the classrooms. So an employer need not necessarily be looking for academic credentials, which the universities stand. So you can very well appreciate that these changes are going to happen. One of the important uh, initiatives uh, that we have taken at AACT is setting up of idea labs. I know that many of you would say that online is not the solution. So to ensure experiential learning for engineering students, we are setting up idea labs. We already have 50 of them in place and we are going to expand this network. These are 24 by 7 by 365 labs. No lock to be put there. 
open for faculty, students, anybody in the campus, off the campus to use this facility. We conducted faculty development program for the people who are going to man these ideal lands. And your this FDP, you are holding it. It's a week long FDP, but I think it will be of five days. The idea lab FDPs are of seven days. It starts at nine, but there is no time when it ends. The faculty were working right up to 11 p.m. You can see some of the things at my back. These were the items or the products developed by the faculty during those MDPs. So it is not just the students who we want to transform, but the teachers as well. So this is a major initiative that I thought when we are talking about recent advancements, I thought I must share this with you. Uh, another uh, issue related to education, which I am very passionate about, is doing away with the exams. We don't need them. We are in an age where knowledge can be fetched at click of a button. It absolutely makes no sense to keep all those things in your hand. So four years need not be spent in memorizing things and the teachers testing whether it is written or not. So I, on a lighter note, I expand exam EXAM as examining Xeroxing ability of mind. I think everybody will agree with that. They are meant only for examining the Xeroxing ability of mind. We should stop them. We should go for assessments. And instead of exam EXAM, we should go for TASK, that is testing of abilities, skills, and knowledge. And when you do test all these three, head, heart, and hands, all of them get tested. And that's what education or learning is. One more thing which I often say about is for higher education is that there should be no failures. Nobody should be failed when in higher education. If a student or another learner is failed, it is a failure of that institution which has failed to recognize the potential and make that person excel in the field that he or she wants to be in. So we need to do away with exams and faculty should come forward for it, set up questions which have no answers. Make the learning exciting. We need good people. We do not need clerks anymore. We are a growing economy. We need people who think aloud, think out of the box. And this is the responsibility of institution like yours. I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your inspiring uh, words. And rightly said by you, sir, that uh, we are at a new age learning at the moment. And learning is no longer uh, confined to the classrooms uh, anymore. And it is important that we move, as you rightly said, from knowledge to the skill based education that we have. With the abundance of education we have, it is important that we become effective learners. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm ecstatic uh, to invite a guest of honor today, Dr. Uh, ADN Bajpai, Vice Chancellor Atal Bihari Bajpai, Vishwavidyale, Bilaspur, Chhattisgarh. Dr. Bajpai has held many vital positions throughout his career, such as Vice Chancellor Himachal Pradesh uh, University, uh, Vice Chancellor Avadesh Pratap Singh University, Vice Chancellor Mahatma Gandhi Chitrakoot Gramodya Vishwavidyale. 
uh, Council Member Association of Commonwealth Universities, London, and Australia India Education Council, Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India, to name a few. Uh, Sir has delivered about 300 expert lectures in various institutes and universities. The subjects of lectures assimilated lineage of knowledge from Vedic treasures to modern art, science, philosophy and spiritual wisdom. Sir, we are humbled and honoured to have you here with us today. I would like to invite Dr. Bajpai for his address for the inaugural session. Yes, so the Pavani to am I audible properly? First of all, let me check myself. Yes, sir. You yes, are sir. Your voice audible. is audible. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Pavani, for speaking so high about me, which I do purchase, but I don't deserve and desire. Isn't it? <clears throat> there are simple credentials. Becoming a vice chancellor is not a big task, but God is great upon me, which uh, make me vice chancellor several universities several times. I am rather thankful to this IIM team in general and Mr. Mayank Agrawal, its director, and uh, many others, especially Niranjan, uh, who make me connected with all of you. And uh, Mr. Neeraj Saxena, and uh, Mr. Amit Datta both belong to one institution which is mainly responsible for dealing with all technologies and innovations in India. That is All India Council for Technical Education, of which I am also associated with when Mr. Sas Budde is the chairperson of the ITC Council. I am personally connected with the Council. Many programs you see at uh, Shimla as well as here in Atalveri Bashpi University, Bilaspur, have also got connects with AICTE so far as uh, organizing FDPs and many other programs also. I'll jump directly to this topic of uh, today. Uh, Neeraj was very con confident and competent when he was making such a bold statements as if uh, uh, we are not living in India. Uh, they are, you see, they are needed. But we'll have to check ourselves whether do we have that, see, infrastructure, especially the philosophical, the mindset infrastructure of common man to have all these things. We have built up one structure. We'll have to connect ourselves with our ancient past. Had this type of business uh, Neeraj mentioned, was with our rishis and munis, who were, you see, having realizations of uh, years together, centuries together, abstracting themselves and going to the moon and many universe, getting some to see mantras and memorizing everything, memorizing all everything and getting, you see, their disciples memorized, which we call Shruti Parampara. Had that Shruti Parampara not been, you see, kept alive in the minds of our rishis and their, you see, sequence of rishis, I think we could have been nowhere. We belong to that Shruti Parampara. We need to have the use of modern technology, certain. But uh, how this technology can substitute our receive minds, that is the biggest task. So there should be complementarity between our mind and machine. Today we are moving towards say, artificial intelligence. But I think artificial intelligence is good. But that too also should work in hand to hand with the natural intelligence. If natural intelligence being substituted by the artificial intelligence, then I think we'll have we see some difficulties. We are moving towards see machine learnings. Machine learnings are just good. There is no easy uh, two opinions about the usefulness of machine learning. But what will happen? 
So the values of which Neeraj was also testing, uh, was telling, values of man, the values and ethics of man should also go along with machine learnings. We should go for see, data mining. Data mining, okay. Data mining is good. But what will happen to the mining of the soul itself, which is full of see, knowledge. So the mining of the soul as well as mining of data should also go to see, uh, together. We should have data centers in one of the uh, programs of AICTE only. And I'm told that uh, India is not having sufficient data centers because they are depending upon, you see, uh, especially United States of America, somewhere in China. And most of see, our apps and programs are being linked to those data centers. If they are the owners, they can use our data as uh, we can. So data centers are okay, but uh, the centers of generation of ideas and thoughts also be required. So what I want to say that to, as a just footnote to Professor Neeraj Saxena's lecture, um, we should have some holistic way of you see, learning and you see, knowledge systems. With the invent of these wireless systems, whether we give credit to J.C. Bose or Marconi, that's a matter of debate. And friends, Sanira Saxena and Amit uh, uh, know it see better how the name went in favor of Marconi and not to J.C. Bose. The things have been revolutionary changed so far as communication is concerned. Well before the wireless communication, the speed of transportation and communication went together. There was a positive correlation between the speed of communication and transportation. That disconnect of the transportation communication has brought a lot of revolution. And from G to 2G to 3G, we are moving towards 5G, which you see in the Madam Nirmala Sita Raman, at the behest of our prime ministers, you see uh, idea. We are moving towards that to see 5G also, which will certainly help. Not only help the students to alter their own personality in favor of online usage of uh, uh, teaching, learning, examination, pedagogy, everything, but also to have an access over the knowledge globally available to us. That's the beauty of today's you see technology. So my uh, request to all the students, researchers, faculty members, that you should utilize the global information, global knowledge, global wisdom also, to the best suiting to your research and education requirements. But again, I would like to add, because there are two distinct compartments are you see, going together, parallel streams are going together. One stream is that which believes that we should go modern, modern, we should try to become modern, ultra modern, post ultra modern, like that. We should move on technology, technology and everything as technology can do all good things. And another stream of knowledge that we should connect ourselves with our see, indigenous knowledge also. Because this modern technology we have been using with a little or more, but when we are connected with already existing research available in the market, then what will you do? You will simply extend your see, research, which has already been done in uh, UK, United States of America, or you see, whether uh, in Japan or France or in you see, uh, big countries. That was simply is the extension of see, knowledge. So far as your creativity is concerned, where will shall it set connect your creativity come from until you connect yourself with your indigenous, indigenous knowledge? And a lot of things are being done towards that also. We are moving towards digitalization of Vedas, Puranas, Upanishads, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, our Ramayana, our Vedas, Guru Granth Sahib, Sant Tulsi Das, Ramcharit Manas, and many others, I think most of the literature has been 
digitalized and is available for you in your its usage so with the use of this modern technology you should go and turn the pages of those is the ancient knowledge of which 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 made us the vishuguru the national education policy of which uh, again neeraj talked about yeah obviously national education policy talks about s to s sanskrit to sanskrit and for learning sanskrit also this modern technology can be can be uh, of very much use and matrubhasha hindi and many other languages this modern technology can be used for use of mother languages also in our you see uh, education and research what i mean to say that uh, keeping our indigenous knowledge at the foundation level because uh, till date hitherto we have not totally not totally been means a little bit of it have been discovered so we should increase that amount of discovery of of indigenous knowledge select topics you see from those you see indigenous knowledge system and just go for it elaborate do research on those validate it see them publish research papers by using all it see modern technology then you will be original then you will be creative then you will be getting more and more nobel prizes in science in physics chemistry like that and it's only possible when we make our see holistic approaches and i think i would like to mention that uh, it appears that uh, most of the use of uh, uh, modern technology is just confined to the science and technology subjects what will happen to shayari of mirza ghalib farak sahab ki shayari ka kya hoga us gule nagma ka kya hoga मीर तकी मीर की शायरी का क्या होगा आई एम टॉकिंग पोएट्री परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स और फिलोसफी और साइकोलॉजी और सो मेनी सब्जेक्ट ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस व्हिच आर कनेक्टिंग विद द सोसाइटी सो हाउ दिस विद द मेजर ब्रांच ऑफ नॉलेज व्हिच इज सरकमस्क्राइब्ड इन सोशल साइंसेस इन ह्यूमैनिटीज दैट टू शुड बी ब्रॉट इनटू द कवरेज ऑफ वा use of modern technology and today i am very happy when i received a this message in morning that uh, isro has launched as global radio global radio initially it was radio uh, limited to the jurisdiction of one particular area with the use of satellite you are just push the buttons you can connect with the radio of anywhere in the world so this is how you sir we are moving towards everything is available on your see uh, mobile so uh, my dear friend that uh, uh, we should make ourselves more competent more uh, indian more bharatiya another thing i would like to mention that uh, uh, modern technology as i told you that is confined to science and technology at the same time it is limited to very limited section of our population that's another is matter of worries the areas of uh, see remote villages or see some places like chatisgarh where i am or jharkhand or bihar or odisha and that to see the backward population which are see relatively less privileged so i think we should make some attempts to make our see technology reach to those where it has not reached either true and also make our see technology reach to our see indigenous knowledge see discovery as such and also make a see holistic approach as such with these words as i close and again uh, express my gratitude to imt ranjan kumar and many others who uh, thought apt to invite me and also your opportunity to listen to mr nirmal nirmal sakseena again thank you very much bye bye vande matram
Thank you so much, sir, uh, for your words of wisdom and knowledge. And I believe, uh, as you have said rightly, that in the world of uh, AI, we should not forget our natural intelligence. And the need of data centers is there, obviously, but the centralization of ideas and thoughts is equally uh, necessary. And, sir, I believe that, as you said, that it is important that we culminate all fields of uh, knowledge together with the technology, and that is how we'll be able to stay abreast in this uh, competitive uh, environment. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your Thank words. You. Thank you. And next, I'm happy to announce and introduce our guest of prime, uh, Dr. Amit Datta, uh, Deputy Director, Atal Cell AICTE. Dr. Datta is a doctorate in artificial neural networks, he began his career as a faculty in Barkatullah University, Bhopal, and subsequently holding many substantial positions in his career, he became a regional officer at WRO AICTE Mumbai. At present, sir is the deputy director of AICTE New Delhi. I welcome uh, Dr. Amit Datta and welcome him for his welcome address. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible now? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah, so uh, actually I'm traveling due to some pre-commitment. Uh, good afternoon to all uh, dignitaries, respected Indian Vajpayee, sir, respected uh, Neera Saxena, sir, and uh, the managing trustees of the IMT, uh, respected uh, Amit Rai ji, Madam Prita ji. Thank you for the invite and giving me the opportunity to uh, talk about the faculty development program. Uh, it's my proud privilege to address this August gathering. And uh, in Atal, we are also organizing the same faculty development program in the online mode. And just wanted to uh, say that uh, the Atal has been conferred the World Book of Record for organizing the maximum number of faculty development program in a year. And uh, you know the importance of uh, uh, coming to the today's topic. The importance of all emerging areas uh, like AI, ML, etc., have been constantly growing, and the artificial knowledge has uh, based industries have now occupied the center stage of development, not only in our country but across the globe. And you all know we Indians are very fast learners. So due to COVID also, there is a paradigm shift in our teaching learning process, pedagogy, the way in our higher education, imparting instruction in laboratory, workshop has now been changed. So our ensuing education is highly collaborative, cross-institutional, multidirectional, multidirectional, interdisciplinary. So the new emerging areas on which the AI city is also focusing like AI, ML, blockchain, cybersecurity, machine learning, uh, for uh, establishing the better convergence between the man and machine and explore the new pedagogy. We must adopt the new technological tool for effective del delivery of instructions. And uh, you know now our students will be our equal partner in the new academic self-paced landscape of online learning. Of course, our new medium of instructions, uh, which AICT is also focusing, is regional languages and this year onwards, the uh, the B, uh, B and B Tech programs is also available in the regional languages. And we all know the United Nations Sustainable Goals, 11 out of 17, spells about the sustainable cities and commodities. I was just reading McKenzie report. It says, over the next five to ten years, the skill sets of you know traditional automakers and suppliers will need to shift dramatically. Several factors will drive this change. The rising importance of in-vehicle software and the connected and autonomous cars increases the need of the digital talent. The putting OEMs worldwide in direct competition with Silicon Valley and the Chinese digital giants. But the shift isn't merely an issue of seeking out new kinds of engineers. Despite 2020 being a tipping point uh, year for the electric vehicle sales and automakers and the consumers will need to accelerate their adoption 
we have and we hope the meaningfully the limit climate change reducing the carbon emission from vehicle is critical currently the road transport accounts for 13% of global carbon emission the decade between 2025 to 2035 will determine the industry can keep cumulative co2 emission for passenger cars uh, under 45 gigatons a carbon budget that would uh, help a global temperature increase uh, to uh, under 1.5 so according to the McKinsey analysis, the energy and the transport sectors can work together to drive the smart changing technologies that would in turn accelerate the shift of electric vehicles. This is the technology which is knocking the doors in the Indian subcontinent. The coalition can form the develop the clean supply chain for the creation of low carbon battery solution that reflect the full potential of a circular economy. Ultimately, the regulators and the policy makers may have to intercede for making such a changes. Uh, so uh, I would like to focus here if you have a road or a bridge uh, which gives the transport facility in the daytime and which absorb the energy and which can uh, give the light and emission to the charging substations in the night. So this kind of collaborative technology can be focused and will be a great change. So this is what uh, the Mexico has started. They have a concrete bridge road in their city that absorbs solar energy during the daytime and emits lights after sunset. So AICT is undivided focus on the quality education and creating a complete ecosystem for quality teaching learning process. Uh, I'd like to not take your much of your time. My earlier speaker has already given a lot of emphasis on the today's topic. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Datta. Uh, and I believe, as you have said, that we must adopt uh, latest technological tools to enhance the student learning processes. The role of policymakers, as you said, is very necessary for the upcoming dynamic changes that have to come. And uh, not only the technology, but also in the other fields as well. Thank you so much, sir. My request to Dr. Amit Rai, Dean BBA for the deliverance of vote of thanks. Thank you, Pravneet Kaur, for giving me this opportunity. So as far as concern about the teaching learning process, it is a never ending process. So I, Dr. Amit Kumar Rai, on the behalf of IMT College of Management and the entire fraternity of the institution, first of all, extend my most sincere thanks to Almighty God for making today's event as a resounding success. With his blessings and grace, we are able to make this event what it was. I extend a really hearty vote of thanks to our chief guest, Dr. Neeraj Saxena, advisor AICTE, and our guest of honor, Dr. ADN Bajpayee, Vice Chancellor Atal Bihari Bajpayee, Vishwavidyalaya Bilaspur, followed by our guest of prime, Dr. Amit Datta, Deputy Director, Atal Cell, All India Council of Education, and for sparing their time from their busy schedule to grace the occasion. Today, we had an opportunity to hear you, sir, your thoughts, and this will surely be going to encourage us in our future events. Your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path. My gratitude to all the speakers for gracing the occasion and sharing their opportunity today. As you all know, more than 2,000 faculty members have registered for this faculty development program. And out of that, some of the European university, like University of Philippines, Ethiopia, and Malaysia institutes, and the faculty members are also part participating. So with the chant of God Ganesha, I am 
starting this faculty development program like vakra tundu mahakaya surya koti samprabha nirvidram kru me deva sarva karesu sarvada so with this chant i am initiating this faculty development program for the best of their success thank you thank you once again all the dignitaries all the faculty members and the teammates those who have worked hard to get the things done in very accurately and precise way thank you thank you once again pravneet kaur thank you so much sir thank you to all the guests present all the faculties and academicians who are present here uh my request to the faculties of uh, amt college of management to kindly move on to the second link for the session uh, second for the day thank you so much